So what I have here is a fountain pen, but it's not any old fountain pen. It wasn't made 5,000 kilometers away in a factory on a production line. This pen was 3D printed and actually designed here. And while I could go ahead and show you the writing sample just to show that it works, I think when you look at a final product, it's really easy to overlook and underappreciate the processes that go to that go into designing even a very basic fountain pen such as this one. So before I go ahead and actually show you the pen working, let's take a quick look at the many processes that actually went into designing this pen. So let's get started with 3D printing our fountain pen. It's been long enough, I've done a few trial runs, so let's actually get in and get started. And the first thing I'm going to say is, the first pen that I'm going to make this week is not a pen that's going to be challenging Mont Blanc. It's not going to look good and it's not supposed to look good. All I want to do is make some basic components just to show that the pen works, show a proof of concept, so to speak. And what I've gone ahead and actually done is I've gone and drawn up a few components that will be needed because actually in this pen, there's actually not that many things that need to be made. Now the things that I'll be making will be the cap, section and barrel, oops, haven't labeled that. But that's all that I need to do. I need to make three components and I'm actually gonna go ahead and model them up because there aren't that many 3D models out there for fountain pens and especially ones that have nib units. And the nib unit that I'm going to use for this project will be the nib unit from a Jinhao 992. So the first thing that we need to do once we've unscrewed the nib unit from the Jinhao 992 is actually figure out what the threads on the nib unit are. Jinhao don't really publish what their threads are on the internet unless they've done it in Chinese which wouldn't really make a difference to me. So we need to go ahead and figure it out. Thankfully all you will need to figure it out is a simple pitch gauge and a pair of calipers and then you can just plug it into a formula and in using the pitch gauge I've worked out that this roughly comes out to be a M6.5 by 0.5 thread and thank god they used metric if they used imperial I would have ended the series right there. Once we've done that, we can pretty much jump onto the computer and start 3D modeling this pen. And like every area of software, there are many to choose from. Each has its pros and cons, and people will fanboy over some software. And I think the most popular 3D modeling softwares to use, at least on YouTube, is either SketchUp or Autodesk Fusion. Though I'd prefer to use SolidWorks, I've used it long enough and I have it on my computer. Once I finished modelling the section, I went ahead and did the same for the cap and the barrel. And to anyone who was asking how I knew how thick to make the plastic, honestly it is just a good guess. The data on SLA resin is very brief and it's not well covered and the strengths of this resin range from 20 megapascals to 60. So honestly the thicknesses are just a guess. But until I get some proper numbers I'll just be guessing it and anything that breaks I know I'll have to make thicker. The next thing we need to do is import the model into a slicer software which pretty much breaks down the 3D model into printable cross sections of the model and it also controls the printer's exposure times and resolution and the software also shows you a preview of the cross sections that it will be printing and as well as that it gives you a rough estimate and I think this print here should take about 6 hours to print.
Once the prints are done, the bed is removed as is the build platform and the excess resin is funneled back into the container and the bed, the build platform and all the parts are thoroughly cleaned in methylated spirits which dissolves any uncured resin. At this point the parts have not fully cured yet and have not reached their full strength yet. A 30 minute shine under a UV torch will further harden it. And there we pretty much have it, our first little pen, a pen that works. And I'm actually amazed that we've got into this stage and there wasn't all that much in it. So let's finally go ahead, ink up the pen and actually test it. The ink that I'll use is just Waterman Red, it's what I had lying around. So let's ink this pen up. All right, let's do this. And what should be no surprise to anyone, the pen writes. The pen works, proof of concept. You can 3D print a fountain pen. And there you pretty much have it. Proof that you actually can go ahead and 3D print your own fountain pen. But this certainly isn't the end of the line for this project. This is only just the beginning because there's certainly a lot of improvements that this pen can have. As I said in the beginning, this is only just proof of concept and this pen wasn't made to work well or even look good. So some improvements that I would like to do in the future would obviously be ergonomics. This pen is, it's not uncomfortable to hold, but it, it can certainly do a lot better. The thicknesses of the pen and the strength certainly can be changed to make it a little bit stronger because I think it's a little bit weak at the moment. I'd like to change the material because this is a pretty weak material. I know I've tested it. The aesthetics, yeah, there's certainly a lot more that can be done with that. There's a lot to be left desired. There is certainly a lot that can be done to this pen. So while we have showed that you certainly can 3D print a fountain pen, there's a lot of work to be done here. And as always, thank you very much for watching.